Hey guys, today we review a case from Fractal Design. This right here is Era ITX Mini Tower. This case is for people who would like to build something stylish, whether it's for their desk or even for the living room. In this video, we'll cover what you get for your money, our experience and tips on building in it, and also benchmark its performance. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Jumping straight into it, this case comes with five colors and they're accompanied by different top panels, white oak, walnut and tempered glass. Do note that top panels are matched with certain colors, so you need to check out their combinations on their website. In this set, you also get more generic steel mesh top panel for better airflow. It's pretty nice to have some options here. Aero comes with one 80 mil rear fan and three dust filters, bottom and sides intakes with top exhaust. This adds flexibility to your cooling airflow should you ever wish to change it up. But to be honest, you should probably leave it at default pull air from the bottom and exhaust out the top. While this is a small case, it actually has reasonably flexible setup for its components. Of course, with some trade-offs. For example, you can fit up to four two and a half inch drives, providing you're using SFX power supply and don't intend on using three and a half inch drives. Or you can flip it over and install two three and a half inch drives without any two and a half inch drives while still using SFX power supply. If you intend to use ATX power supply, you would lose the drive cage. That's something to keep in mind. So like any small case, you really need to do some planning and research of what components will fit and how. Let's run through the build and cover a few tips and considerations. As always, we're doing as much as possible on top of the desk. In this build, we'll be using an ITX motherboard from ASUS, the Z490i Gaming with Intel i7-10700K, a toasty 8-core 16-thread CPU. For RAM, we have gone with a two 8GB sticks from Clev, clocked at 3600 megahertz. This is their Bolt X series. Now it's a good time to start taking a case apart. First, we remove the side drive bracket, and then depending on your power supply, drive and cooler requirements, you'll need to take apart the PSU cage. In our case, we've removed the whole set, set aside the ATX power supply bracket, and then mounted SSD and Fractal SFX 650 watt power supply. This is where we made our first mistake. We mounted the cage too high. Top section is where the radiator will go, so we had to move it down to the lowest position later on. At this point, I would recommend plugging in all your power supply cables and having them to the side ready to go. Use them also to visualize and test fit your routes. Also, take the CPU EPS cable and put it across to where the connector on the motherboard is and then slot the motherboard on top. Or if you forgot to do that in the beginning, you can just slot the cable across like we did. In the cases like this, you really need to plan and cable manage at every step. Then plug in all the front IO cables and using the included cable type below the power supply, tidy up as many cables as you can. In regards of the IO, we have one USB 3.1 Gen 2 type C port and two USB 3.0 ports, as well as a combo audio mic port. I wish Fractal had made these cables a little shorter as they're currently creating havoc in this case. But I also understand that different motherboards may have connections in different locations and longer cables will cover all eventualities. At least they made these cables flat though. After the IO cables are done, it's time for the GPU. And be careful here. In the spec sheet of a case, it says that it can fit up to a dual slot graphics card with a length below 295 mil, or even as short as 190 mil with a low hanging SFX or ATX power supply. Also, watch out for the wide cards. If a cooler is larger than the reference design, you may have clearance issues, especially at the back where the case starts to curve. If you opt for using a single slot card, then you can also fit two fans underneath it. We've tried to use ROG Strix 2080 Super, but it's too long and had to settle for a GTX 1060 Dual from ASUS. Here, you can plug in the power supply straight away and hide the cable behind it or slightly to the side. At this stage, don't be afraid to take off the power supply to move the cables around and do some, yet again, cable management. With all the main components now in place, we can plug in the remainder of the power cables and SATA cable for the SSD and do the file securing for the power supply. Lastly, we're installing the radiator. For this, we have to undo the four screws on the top and then remove the whole section. We're using a Fractal Design Celsius Plus 240 mil liquid all-in-one cooler. We've already attached the fans and routed the cables around to the onboard fan controller. I really like this implementation, especially in cases where access is limited. This way, all the cables are hidden on the cooler itself, and there's only a single cable that needs to be plugged in from the water block. 
unless you opt for using RGB, then you'll need to plug that one in as well. I would recommend to attach the radiator loosely and then slide it in. Adjust it back and forth and then secure it down, making sure to leave enough space for the water tubes. We can move the cables out of the way, put some thermal compound and with a little bit of wiggle, mount the cooler. A little note here, if you forget to mount the back plate for the cooler like we did, it's not a big problem as this case has a large cutout at the back. Thanks Fractal for that. Last thing to do is to make sure that all the cables are plugged in and out of the way from the fans. I recommend using a few cable ties here. Then install the side drive mount, flick the power supply switch and close the case up. I like that the side panels are toolless. Just make sure your cables or water cooling tubes are not pushing onto them. With all this done, we are ready to start benchmarking. For the benchmarks, we have enabled XMP profile and left the rest on default. This is to keep it fair for most users. A more enthusiast builder may want to overclock and underwall to optimize both the GPU and the CPU. Just to note, we're using a mesh top for all these tests, but we'll include a few comparisons between mesh and tempered glass. First, let's jump into Cinebench R20, and here we have a score just shy of 5000, which is exactly what you would expect from a 10700K. When we look at the temperatures, it peaks at 83 degrees, which is very reasonable, and it has a frequency of 4.7 gigahertz. When we fired up Blender and ran the test using CPU to get a much longer benchmark, here we see a temperature jumping to a high 80s, and after about 30 seconds, it drops down to high 70s. When we look at the CPU frequency, we see it starts at 4.7 GHz on all core and then throttles down to 4.3 to 4.4 GHz, which is still pretty good considering this is a small PC running at stock. We then load this PC up with the most unrealistic and extreme workloads, both Prime95 and Firma, to really stretch it. The tests here are done with three different configurations. First, with a mesh top, second with a tempered glass, and for the third, we remove the top cover and also top filter to see how big of a difference it can make. Starting with the CPU, we find the temps hitting 98 degrees with the tempered glass top panel and 96 when using mesh. When the mesh and the filter is removed, it drops down to 95 degrees. About 30 seconds later, the boost is over and the speed and temperature drops. Now we're seeing 82 degrees while using tempered glass, 79 while using mesh and 78 while completely open. If we look at the clock speeds, all three variants hit 4.7 GHz on all cores and then go down to about 4.1 GHz for the remainder of the tests. Do note, the completely open case also has a 10 MHz faster clock speeds, but this is very negligible. When we look at the GPU temperatures, there's only a difference of about 1 degree between each of the variants, while we're on the way to the peak temperature of 93 degrees. Looking at the clock speeds, they are all within a few MHz of each other. Completely open case is slightly faster, but again, very negligible. From this test alone, we can see that there is a definite few degree performance hit while using tempered glass cover. My personal preference here is using mesh, not just because there's a performance difference, but also because it makes it look better with a matte finish and also fits in better with the side intake holes. Tempered glass panel just looks too reflective. What do you guys think? Let's jump into a few game benchmarks. For gaming, we've set all the games to 1080p and maxed out the settings to really push the system. First up, we have Shadow of a Tomb Raider, and here we have an average of 54 FPS and 49.8 at 1 percentiles. In this example, GTX 1060 is a little bit too weak. When it comes down to the thermals, we have a toasty low 80s on the GPU and a very reasonable 50 to 70 degrees on the CPU. In Doom Eternal, we maintain 91.2 FPS on average and 73.4 at 1 percentiles. On this game, GTX 1060 manages to keep good frame rates. We do, on the other hand, get very interesting temperatures. GPU is locked at 82 degrees, which is basically maxed, and CPU is around 56 degrees. When we run a much less demanding title like CSGO, we hit an average of 311 FPS and 189 at 1 percentiles. The graphics card here, on average, got about 84% utilization. This reflects really well on the temperatures. We have a maximum of 72 degrees on the GPU and CPU ranges between 40 and 60 degrees. From these tests, we can definitely see that there are a few limitations. If you run the graphics card or CPU at maximum for a prolonged amount of time, then your components will throttle down. On the other hand, if it's just casual gaming or some sort of creative workload, excluding exporting, of course, then it would be hot but manageable. 
I hope for the next version of this case, Fractal adds in some feet to the bottom and intake filter to improve airflow and provide better cooling for the GPU. Because clearly that's the only item in this system which really struggles. Temperatures are not everything though. This case is good looking and small enough to be placed on a desk right next to you. So noise level is another important aspect. We've tested it in two scenarios. First one while 30 centimeters away and another about 50 centimeters away. In both scenarios we've tested noise from the front and from the side. And just to note, our room noise level is around 35 decibel. In our test from 30 centimeters away, while idle we hit about 37.2 decibels from the side and 36 from the front. When we apply Prime95 and Fermac load, we have about 46.5 decibels from the side and surprising 40.4 decibels from the front in our test from 50 centimeters away, which to be fair is a more realistic distance. At idle, we have 35.4 from the side and 35.5 from the front. When we hit Prime95 and Fermac, we get 44.5 decibels from the side and 39 from the front. Results here are actually very interesting. If you plan to load this case up with the components that generate loads of heat and run them at full speed like we did here, you will certainly notice some noise when it's placed right beside you. You have two options, place it out of the way or turn it so the noise is not heading directly towards you. But then again, this kind of negates the point of getting a PC case that is, well, this elegant. I believe this case is more suitable for a casual user who values looks over performance. When discussing this with my wife, she agreed that a case like this would be a great statement piece when placed in the living room by our TV. For me, this is a perfect home theater PC that looks good, as well as sitting directly in front of it, we won't really hear it. So it's a win-win. Plus, I have now won an argument about getting an extra PC around the house. If you want to check out any of the items we've tested today, we'll leave the links in the description below. I hope this was useful. Don't forget to smash the thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.